So tell me if you've heard this one before. In the last episode, the San Jose Sharks blew it in the first round of the playoffs. That, that seems awfully familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, that's because it happened again. We blew it. The two main talking points coming out of the last episode really have to do, you know, the, the talk is surrounding two players. It has to do with these two players their future on the team and perhaps why they were on the team in the first place and whether or not they should have been the guys to be here in the first place. You get the point. It comes down to Evgeny Dadnoff and Martin Jones, the latter of who most of you would probably like to see me fire out of a cannon. Hell, he could be inside of a cannon that is then put into a bigger cannon and then fires him out of the state of California. It's... It's a weird episode that we're going to have here because, admittedly, I'm a little bit torn. Because there are one of two ways we can go about things here, and it's a drastic it's a drastic move regardless, right? And you get a look at the players that underperformed in the playoffs, Tom, uh, Tomas Hurdle, Kevin LeBanc, and Dadnoff, really the three biggest disappointments from a forward perspective defensively. I mean, Burns and Carlson were okay, but yeah, it's not too hard to see who was disappointing. And goaltending-wise, Martin Jones. The reason why I didn't, you know, take him out in favor of Craig Anderson is that compared to last year in the playoffs, he was actually a little bit better at the time, deserved a bit of a chance, and obviously it didn't work out. The two directions that we can go, and I've started to record this episode three times. This is my third attempt on this one because I just don't know what the hell I want to do with this team. Direction number one Holy menu lag EA. Really? Jesus Christmas. Direction number one is that we stay somewhat quote-unquote realistic in that we respect that Martin Jones and Mark Edward Vlasic do have no movements and no trades, so in real life they're not going anywhere even if they're this bad. Which, yeah, it is kind of nice. I don't like to immediately blow up teams at the start of a franchise in the first couple seasons. I like to stay loyal to the players for the most part. But those two guys in particular are dragging us down. So that's a problem. Which brings us to the flip side where we do get rid of them. And it's like, okay, you know, once, once that starts, are we just going into full-on ruthless... We just do whatever we have to do, try to exploit the AI, maybe not all the time, but we make the moves that have to be made to try and get this team to win. Two different directions that you can go, they're uh, complete opposites from one another, and I don't know, as the Flyers get their revenge, I don't know what direction is best for this series, what direction I'm most intrigued by and interested in, what direction you guys are going to be most intrigued by and interested, although I have a feeling it would be option two, because again, that involves seeing Martin Jones get fired out of a cannon, potentially. So, it's it's really interesting to be in this situation in this series this early on, and it's simply because this team has underperformed for two seasons in a row as Lucas Radil just won a Stanley Cup. Uh, this team should have been good enough, obviously, to get out of the first round in both of the past two seasons, and it just hasn't happened. And because of that, we are now facing this situation where Carter Hart's won a Stanley Cup already for the Philadelphia Flyers, and we're stuck here wondering what the hell's going on as the Stanley Cup will stay in the state of Pennsylvania. Individual awards, the Art Ross goes to Patrick Kane. He also wins the Hart. The Norris goes to Eric Carlson, so we have back-to-back -back award winners there. The Lady Bing goes to Patrick Kane. Alex Nylander wins the Calder. Conn Smythe to Voracek. Bobrovsky wins the Vesna and the Jennings. The Masterton to Darnell Nurse. Simpson in Anaheim wins the Jack Adams. The Selkie to Alex Barkoff. The Ted Lindsay to Patrick Kane. And the Rocket Richard to Alex Ovechkin. In the AHL, you have Anton Lindell putting up the most points. He was also league MVP. Riley Tufty scored the most goals. Top rookie was Lindell again. Jake Bean, top defenseman. Top goaltender, Jeremy Swayman. And the MVP of the playoffs, Tanner Agino. So, there you go. I think when you look at what this past season was for us, you know, we give Martin Jones one more chance. The talk over, you know, picking Dadnoff over... Ryan Nugent Hopkins, which admittedly, and the reason I segue to this is because we're going to look at the progress reports, is that you'll see here the cupboards are a little bit barren, which sucks. I mean, granted, when you have a team that's competitive year in and year out, that's to be expected. But it's, like I said, it's a really interesting spot that we find ourselves in with this team. 
because for as long as we have Logan Couture, Evander Kane, Eric Carlson, Timo Meyer, you know, even Tomas Hurdle for as bad as he was in the playoffs, we do need to go for it. We talked about it, the rebuild on the fly. It's just to what, you know, what levels we go to, I guess, for lack of a better term, to try and win. That said, I still don't know what the hell I want to do. I still don't know what direction to go in. And whether or not, as Jesus Christ, Buffalo just moved from 15 to 1. Good God. Poor Los Angeles and Detroit. It's tough to know what the best direction is to go here. It really is. But I am I am leaning towards trading Martin Jones, trading Vlasic. Joe Thornton retires. So for those who didn't want to see me stay loyal to he and Marlowe, there you go. One of them's gone. Joe, I'm so sorry we failed you. You deserved better. You really did. Defensively, you have Andre Secker, Andy Green, Johnny Boychuk, and for goaltenders, Chad Johnson, the only guy to retire. So from one low to another, as Joe Thornton actually just became a coach. So that'll be interesting. Erickson and Sekera become scouts. So Joe Thornton as a coach. Like I said, things just perhaps got pretty damn interesting. Especially depending on what type of coach he is. Uh, we're going to pass up on interviews here. I don't know how this offseason is going to go and what this team is going to look like by the end of this episode. But we're going to go through the experience together. Let's do this. The draft is here. One way or another, major decisions are going to be made because we're either going to... Oh, we got puppy dreams going on in the background. That's adorable. Um, either way, there are going to be major changes because either or major decisions made because either we make major changes or we don't, which could be equally as harmful. So taking a look at what we have going on here, as far as the draft pick situation. We have our first, we don't have a second, but we have two thirds, then a ton of fourths, a ton of mid-round picks, quite a few sevenths as well, and there's a chance that we're gonna end up with even more if we look to trade down. In terms of trading up, I don't think that's gonna happen unless you factor in giving up someone like Kevin LeBanc, which honestly might happen. I'm not sure what his future is here. Goaltending wise, my biggest issue with getting rid of Martin Jones is I don't know who I'm gonna keep or you know who I'm who we're gonna get to get rid of him because we're not or oh, god damn it. Who we're going to get to replace him if we get rid of him because we are gonna try to shop Craig Anderson's rights here. Again, we never even played him. And we get one offer. It's a seventh round pick. I'll take that. We're not bringing him back. We'll be able to make the use of that value. Ryan Murray's not happy about it. Fun fact, Ryan, you're probably getting traded too. Oh, Martin Jones. In real life, you have a no trade clause. I think it's a three-team list that he'd be willing to go to. But for the sake of this series and the fact that you're just not getting it done, I think you're out, buddy. I don't know who the hell is going to replace you. We have three offers, and all three are from the Blackhawks. Okay, let's maybe hold off on shopping Martin Jones for the moment. Let's see who else we have to move. There is Mark Edward Vlasic, which, again, we should take a look. I mean, hell, you could argue, well, Brent Burns is 36. You know, maybe, hell, what offers would we get for Brent Burns? Two first-round picks from the Oilers, two firsts from the Islanders, or Keandre Miller. It'd be an interesting move, but I don't think I want to trade Burnsy just yet. I know he's getting up there in age, but he's still a beast. Vlasic, on the other hand, has been nothing but trouble. He still has an outrageous contract left, where there's no way he'd see the end of it. We do have offers. We have 35 offers for Mark Edward Vlasic. Hendricks Lapierre, who's a medium six, a first and a third. Jack Studnika, oh my god. Really? The stud and a third? A first from Calgary. Uh, Nikolaev and a second. Rasmus Sandin. Okay, and a fourth, Ryan Suzuki, a first and a fourth, Jack Drury, it's going to kick me out of this in a minute, Stelio and a fourth, Thomas Harley, a first and a third, Alban Erickson, Riley Tufty, Ty Delandria, Philip Berberg, 
First and a fifth. Evan Bouchard. A first and a fourth. I mean, shit, Evan Bouchard might be the guy to get. You have Kiefer Bellows, Holmstrom, Wallstrom, Nils Lundqvist, Dominic Bach, Leighton Moore, Perunovic, Heinen in a first and a fourth. Hoaglander, Cole Lind, and we didn't see the last trade, which might have been for Winnipeg. I mean, that's just too good of a... That's... I, I have to trade him. I have to, right? I mean, that's just too good to pass up. He's a problem defenseman. He's 34 years old. He's not good anymore. Like, there's just way too much value there. I want to keep Vlasic because, yeah, in real life, he's going to be a shark, you know, for his career. He's not going to play for another team unless something drastically changes. But when you look at this, I mean, the offer for, you know, I think Evan Bouchard would probably be the best one. Like, there's just a ton of prospects here that we could go for where we really could just take our pick. I don't think any of the first rounders were for this year. They were all for next year. But, I mean, you want to talk about trading a defenseman and immediately getting one back. I mean, I love me, you know, some Jack Stutnika, but Rasmus Sandin on Calgary is a very interesting one. They want to trade him as well. He's a medium 476 at this point. Leaf fans will argue he was perhaps underrated off of how he did in the preseason this year, and you might be right now that he's made the Leafs roster. Who else do we have? Jonathan Taves is there, but I'm looking more at the prospects. So Tufty's a 76. I care more about the defenseman, though. If we could get an immediate replacement. Bouchard's a 78, so... Perhaps Evan Bouchard would be the best option. Take that deal from the Oilers, get Evan Bouchard out of it, and pretty much have the replacement immediately for Mark Edward Vlasic. I think that's too good to pass up. You have Wallstrom, who's a 77, and Keandre Miller's a 76 of 21 as a high four. It's got to be Bouchard or Keandre Miller. And it would be Keandre Miller if we think he has a slightly higher potential to actually hit what his potential is. Which is very interesting. I mean, like I said, part of me wants to stay loyal to Vlasic. But the other, you know, the, the logical side of me knows, like, okay, if I do that, yeah, I'm kind of shooting this team in the foot. I'm shooting our chances to win. Out of said cannon. That cannon's about to get a lot of use. We have to deal Vlasic. And I honestly think the best option is to send him to Edmonton for Evan Bouchard, who is the most NHL ready out of the bunch that we saw. It's a very Edmonton thing to do. God damn it, EA. Why'd you have to do that this year? <laughs> it would be a very Edmonton thing to do. Maybe not with Ken Holland at the uh, at the helm of that particular ship at this point, but it's it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Staying loyal to Vlasic and to this starting team, it's not working. So for whatever reason his value is this high, I'm trading for Evan Bouchard. Let's do it. Mark Edward Vlasic dealt to the Oilers. We get Evan Bouchard to immediately replace him, who is a 77. Uh, due to the morale slightly dropping because he's nervous about his new team or whatever. Which is just weird. What else do we have here out of players who could potentially fetch us some value? I am going to try to move Ryan Murray's rights. I don't think we're going to bring him back. He was okay, but nothing too special. We got a lot of offers for him, too. A fifth round pick at the top. Seems to be about the best. Filpula... Salino, Daly, I think a fifth and a sixth. Nikita Gusev, who we've used plenty of times. Igor Shostyorkin, very Jordan Binnington, very interesting. I said I don't know who I would pick up if I were to deal Jones as the backup. If I didn't, that was one of the points I meant to make. Pretty sure I said that before I dealt Craig Anderson. If we that could be it right there. Use Ryan Murray to get Jordan Bennington. We'd have to re-sign him, but then we have free reign to flip Martin Jones. 
That would leave me with no excuse. Jordan Bennington's a San Jose Shark. <sighs> Wheeling and dealing. Martin Jones, you're out of here, buddy. Because we now have a goalie that could replace you at the very least. More of a sure thing. We're going to take the two second round picks from the Blackhawks. Martin Jones is now in Chicago. Do I feel good about that? Did we just make the right moves? Have I destroyed the series from a realism perspective? There are a lot of different ways you can, you know, digest what just happened. I don't know how I feel about it or what it's going to mean long term. And hell, I don't even know if we're done because I want to move Dad off. I might still shop Kevin LeBanc. A fourth for Dad enough. Is there anybody else? A fourth and a seventh from Nashville. We'll take that. Dadnoff was awful. That was a mistake I'd like to regret. So, or uh, That's a mistake I do regret and I'd like to forget. So we move him out. What would the return be for Kevin LeBanc? 33 offers and it immediately boots me out, which sounds about right. Again, I don't think we really have enough to try and make anything happen. I just want to see what offers we get for LeBanc because it just hasn't worked. Trevor Zegra and Jack Hopaka... Olivier Garou a second and a third, Morand, Ryan Johnson a first and a second, Niebeck, Davidson, Rasmus Sandin again, multiple, you know, double first round pick offers, I mean Sandin and a first, it's a late first, but it could work, Bowers, Connor Timmons, Delandria again, Philip Braberg, Denisenko, Maverick Bork, Nils Lundqvist, I mean, there, there are options here. Cole Perfetti in a second. I like Kevin LeBanc. I want this to work. It just hasn't. Which is why it's interesting to me that, I mean, we could pick up two first-round picks. A former first, I mean, Rasmus Sandin and a first this year could work out really well. I mean, moving him to Calgary could totally backfire. But I do kind of like the idea of getting Rasmus Sandin to really shore up things defensively. Philip Breberg is there as well. But the first isn't included. Do I want to move Kevin LeBanc? I like Calgary's deal the best. I really like Kevin LeBanc in real life as a player. I think the Sharks would be idiots to move him, especially after the deal that he signed. 37-point season and a 41-point season. I don't know if we're changing head coaches. It depends on if Joe's a head coach or not. But he has three points in 12 playoff games over the past two years. For whatever reason, it just really hasn't worked out that well. You'd like to think it would, though, because of how well-rounded he is. But a late pick in this draft... You factor in getting another good defenseman who I still can't believe the Leafs traded in the first place. Hmm. He would fit on a third pairing at the moment, too, and is still on his ELC. And you got to figure his overall could be higher, technically. Low morale could be affecting it. <sighs> Do we trade Kevin LeBanc? Do we really pull the trigger on this? Do we give him a third season to try and turn it around because if we do give him one more season his value is going to drop if we you know try to decide like oh at the deadline that it's not going to work out so i'm going to back out for the moment i don't even have to because christensen was picked up by the kings really good deal for them arizona got an absolute steal in gillies but it's because the other two are high elites holy hell what what's even happened so far <laughs> i said i didn't know what was going to go down and I still don't think we're done. I don't think we are. <sighs> Kevin LeBanc. For Rasmus Sandin in the 28th overall pick. It just hasn't worked over these two seasons. It just hasn't worked. <sighs> God, what am I even doing right now? See if I can move Zach Smith, who we just picked up from Chicago. Can I get anything for him? A sixth. We'll take a sixth. Actually, here, we'll deal him back to Ottawa. 
There you go, Zach. Marcus Sorensen. I mean, basically produces like Kevin LeBanc. Pretty much did. It was pretty damn close. And certainly not as expensive and fits in a little bit better with the team. Honestly, I might keep him. And then centers. I gotta be honest, if I can get, if I can get something from Marlo, I'm going to. We just lost Joe. A sixth, sixth and a seventh, fifth and a seventh. It'd be funny to deal him to Carolina. Marcus Felino. I mean, maybe we keep him, but he did have a really good season. He's gotten 50 points for us over the past two years, and he was one of our best players in the playoffs. Maybe we hold on to him. I think we're good for the moment. We have $21 million in space now. A lot of players where I don't quite know how they're going to fit in just yet. A lot of decent depth options. And then again, defensively now, we have Bouchard and Sandine in the system. And Jordan Bennington is shaping up to be our goaltender. I legitimately don't know how to feel about that. I think, because now we have two first round picks, rather than trading up, I'd rather make both of them. So let's sim to that pick. And then, God, they're back to back picks, but maybe we should have, uh, maybe we should have gone for it. McCarthy, medium elite to the Penguins, 70 overall. So that sucks. But we do have back to pack, back to back picks now. Thanks to the Calgary Flames and that deal. Let's find out first and foremost what we're getting with our own pick. And let's see what we have here. So Ellison, okay. No weaknesses, straight A's, NHL ready confirmed. He's got to be medium top six, right? If this guy's medium elite, that would be insane. Ariel Hewson, who could also be pretty ridiculous one year out. Landeskog, two years out. Halmerson apparently can't skate three years out. Cademan Watkins, Cademans don't exist. Is that confirmed? Oh, it's a low elite. And then Kyle Cernkovich. Now this draft is going to be bogged down a little bit by the real world players, of course. So I think we're going to have to do our damage here. There's also a 19-year-old goalie, but he's in the 30s. A complete unknown, huh? And then Jesper Wallstead, but I know he's at a medium starter rather than medium elite. All right, there are three players that stand out to me, and we have two picks. Number one is this Gustafson dude. Because you don't see goalies up here unless they're decent. And I know what Wallstead is, but I don't know what he is. The one downside is that he's 19. Actually, I guess there are four. There's Watkins, Houston, and Ellison. Those are the ones that stand out to me. The way I see it, we can get two of them, maybe three. I feel like Ellison with those grades has to be the pick. Houston, and then Watkins is a low elite, two years out. That dude's one year out. It's just the question of, I mean, he's 18, he's also 18. The low elite versus someone who's probably a medium top four. Watkins is also a two-way. But then again, there's Gustafson. I think I might trade up. Gustafson's so weird to be there. I'm going to take a forward, a defenseman, and see if we can get that goaltender. One of each, right? One of each. So the first pick, the easy pick. Well, we're going to go for Connor Ellison of the Owen Sound Attack, who is a 77 overall medium top six. Very interesting. Not quite McCarthy level, but a 77 overall. I guess that equates to being NHL ready. Very well rounded as a two way. I can't hate that. I can't hate that. Before we make this next pick, though, for Tampa. Oh, God. I don't know if we have the value to pull this off. I genuinely don't. Oh, that's right. We have Chicago's second round pick now. Never mind. We can definitely pull this off. I forgot all about that. So say we go with Chicago second, and then we have 
the Tampa third. How much more would I have to add to this? I'd rather find this trade on my own than use Trade Finder because I know that we have all of these fourth round picks at our disposal. Although apparently I am not close at all. Let me use another fourth. If this doesn't work, we'll add in another third. That worked. So there we go. We have three picks in a row. We just got to hope that we're making the right ones. We can't Bruins this after all. So for me, it comes down to one of these two defensemen. Either the Austrian and Ariel Hewson or Watkins. And like I said, it's a little bit early to take this goalie. I'm just intrigued. There's a 19-year-old goaltender. This early in the draft, rated above medium starter, Jesper Wallstead. He has to be good. It's just a question of how good, or it's going to be a gigantic swing and a miss, and then this episode gets remembered for a lot of different reasons. I think I'm going to take Watkins. Just because I don't know about Houston. The grades might be better. He's one year out. I'm going to go for Houston here. I'm going to go for Houston. Let's do it. Ariel Houston, 73 medium top four. So ultimately, we'll see just how good that low elite guy is. Oh, would you rather have a slightly lower rated low elite or a 73 medium four? I'd probably rather have the low elite. So it's still not bad. And then, like I said, I know it's early. I want to see this goalie. Like I said, if we look at goalies in this draft, how is he ahead of Wallstead? That doesn't make sense. Unless he's good. He has to be. He's 19, he's 6'3. How'd he do last year? A 909 in the SHL. Seven shutouts. This is a complete shot in the dark. I'm gonna hope for the best here. Maybe. I could trade. Yeah, God. Can I trade down to like the early stages of the second? Just in case. I really want him. I think he has to be good. It makes no sense as to why he's ahead of Wallstead. Unless he's good. But I really don't want to blow it with a first round pick. I want a second round pick this year, please. No one's willing to offer that. Alright. We're going to risk it here. We've ended up with two decent picks. We've been wheeling and dealing, moving players, which, you know, was going to have to happen sooner rather than later. The LeBanc one's the only one where I'm like, do I really feel confident about that? I am going to take Henrik Gustafsson and hope that he's good. Oh, sweet, merciful God, yes. <laughs> yes! A 71. That is probably the highest rated goalie I've seen out of the draft this year. That is not a bad 1-2-3 punch combination right there. Holy hell. What the hell does our team even look like now? I've traded Martin Jones, Mark Edward Vlasic, Jordan Bennington's our goaltender. We have Evan Bouchard and Rasmus Sandin on defense. Holy hell, this guy. Look at him compared to Alexiev. That's insanity. That is insanity. Alexiev's expendable now. And then defensively... I mean, yeah, we're without Vlasic, but now we have Houston, Bouchard, and Rasmus Sandin... To try and backstop things. Forward wise, eh, but Ellison's there. <sighs> I I don't know anymore, man. I'm gonna see I might as well see if there's a move for Alexiev, if anyone's interested, because again, he just immediately became expendable. Uh not Gustafson, thank you very much. Not moving him. Alexiev. Cole Perfetti in a second. Getting Perfetti would be amazing because we need more forwards. Or Brian Little, Toby, you know? Let me explore this. Cole Perfetti in a second? Let me take a look at this. So Perfetti is a 74 at 19 years old. Medium top six. I'm doing this. I know it seems crazy to move one medium elite goalie, but this guy's going to take forever to develop. If he even does, compared to our other guy. And now we have Bennington. I am, uh, I am taking that deal. Alexiev, thank you for coming. But that had to be done. So we pick up Cole Perfetti as well. 
do it do i like what i'm uh, like this isn't even me talking to you guys like this is me talking to myself do i like what i'm doing here am i happy with this again if i don't do this and we keep Vlasic and jones we're just gonna suck again or blow it in the first round which i would define as sucking regular season doesn't really matter too much is this overboard i don't know <laughs> i don't know Let's uh, let's get out of this round. Serenkovic was medium nine in the Flyers. I didn't even see who they took, but I'm intrigued to see if it was that low elite defenseman. What the hell has happened? It was Landeskog. It was a medium four. All right, I think what we're gonna do is just sim to the next pick. There's probably some. I don't really, I don't really think we have the value to to do anything else. So, I do want to see how good that guy was. 70. Yeah, I probably would have rather had him than the guy we ended up with, but that's not too bad. And then there was an S. Koivu, <laughs> this time going to Ottawa, who was also pretty damn good. Koski Ranta and Dreoff, there were some damn good players. And again, Wallstead, 68 medium starter. I knew there was a reason that goalie had to be rated above him. I couldn't remember what exactly I made Wallstead, but that makes sense. So, let's see who's available here. This episode might only be the draft. Uh, Marion Mikas? Eh. Three, year, eh. three years out isn't too bad for this stage in the draft. That's not too bad at all. Four years, four years, four years for Lindbergh. Bradley is potentially three years out. The Bosnian Herzegovina native. Shout out to Herzegovina. And do we have... Anything else here? Another three year, but that's not confirmed for Zach Lee. It's not looking too good. Axelson? Sven Axelson, he's five years out. How does he compare to other medium elites? Sven Axelson, how do you compare to other medium elites? I think he has a bit more value than Mikas, right? I think he did. In terms of it being... Uh, yeah, so it's a little bit a little bit higher up. 19-year-old Sven Axelson, huh? Five years out there. He's probably not that good, right? Mikas, though, is interesting because he's three years out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Marion Mikas. How good are you? At least be medium nine. <laughs> medium nine on the dot. Damn it. <laughs> I was just going best case scenario. You could have been medium elite if you wanted to be. He's a 61 medium nine. That's not too bad. For a third round pick. When is our next pick? 118? That's way down the road. Shit. I didn't realize when I hit the button on that. I'm like, oh god. Alright, well. That's done. How good is that dude? That is the question. How good is that dude? He probably wasn't that good, right? Zach Lee wasn't that great. Medium six for Axelson. Well, that sucks. There's no real way to know, though. All right. Wow, this draft is looking weak, man. I don't know if we're uh, I don't know if we're making any other picks here. That this draft's looking pretty bad. Pretty pretty bad. Oh, low elite and McDermott. All right, maybe there's some hope. Low elite and Tarvinen. Jesus. Okay, maybe there is some hope after all. Uh, who do we have here? A goalie and Lassie Hutala. Eh. Well, I mean, seventeen. Eh, five years away. I don't trust that he's medium elite, right? He and the other guy. Five years out. Let me sort, because it's all real-world players here. And in terms of medium elites, it's it's not looking good. That guy's confirmed five years out in Lettinen. Do we have low elites? We don't. We got a guy who's close to medium top six in Radulov, but... I gotta be honest, guys. This draft might be over. Korea's, no, I mean, not even close to being confirmed. Yeah, I think I might move this pick. This isn't looking good. I think we've done our damage relatively well with the first three picks. Mikas was okay, but obviously we we did our damage in trading. I, I don't know how to feel about it, but what's done is done, right? Holy, 41 offers. Jesus. Fourth and a seventh. Fourth and a seventh. Koliakovo is not that good. Uh, Markstrom? <laughs> I think we'll probably stick with Bennington. Go with the Markstrom and Bennington combination. 
Sillinger at a low nine. Pavelski, David Backus, Sajak. Jesus, just a, there's just a thousand offers here. This is ridiculous. Can I pair like all of these together and still have an AI be interested? That's my question. What if I do this? No trades found. Well, damn. What if I do this? What if I do this? What about two fourth round picks? Okay. Well, ten offers. Koli Akavo in a fourth. Wine Handle in a fourth. Igor Konovalov. Sillinger in a fourth. Zajac in a fourth. Okay, so that, that literally didn't help at all. That technically made the offers worse. Okay, so I can trade these piece by piece. Dustin Bufflin, huh? Jesus. I can trade these piece by piece, or I can just do like one massive trade and move them all, which is probably the way to do it. I think we're done in this draft because there's not much to go off of. I think I'll be firing all of my scouts at the end of this because they have done a horrible job. An absolutely horrible job. So let's see if we can move all these picks and then assess the, the situation at hand here because this team is now drastically different than it was a half an hour ago. And I, I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> I genuinely don't. I could have gotten a bit more back for that, but whatever. It's cool. It's not as if we're, uh, it's not as if we're hurting for picks, you know? Let's, uh, let's make that deal for the fourth next year, Anaheim. Just a bit low. I wonder if another seven will fix that or if I'm going to have to go with a fifth. Will that fix it? Yes, it will. So we got two other seventh round picks to move. Probably just pick up an Anaheim seventh next year and we'll let the Ducks stock up on a bunch of nothing. Thank you very much, Anaheim, I hope. Yep, there we go. So we are out of this draft. Uh, we hit a home run in the first round, for sure. Very happy with that, especially that Gustafson pick. That's insane. Hell, is not bad either, but... Those trades, Jones is gone, Vlasic is gone, I think most importantly, Kevin LeBanc is gone. Did we, did I do the right thing? We get Cole Perfetti for Alexiev. Oh, Perfetti in a second. We make that trade with Tampa for a bunch of picks. We sent Zach Smith back to Ottawa. We get Rasmus Sandin in a first for Kevin LeBanc. We sent Dadnoff's rights to Nashville. Martin Jones is a Blackhawk. Jordan Bennington for Ryan Murray, essentially. And then Mark Edward Vlasic for Evan Bouchard. And we also sent out Craig Anderson's rights. Did we make the right choice? I genuinely don't know if we did. Like I said... We have a lot of, there's a lot to digest, and now we have a lot of decisions to make because we are going to have some money to spend here. And hell, Joe Thornton, too, scout, you know, coach wise, we got to see what's up with him. We have $31 million to spend. Bennington's looking for $4 million per, which isn't bad. And depending on what goalie's available, other options are certainly there. Uh, defensively, I mean, we're going to have money to bring in a big-time free agent if we want to. And there's a bunch of guys vying for spots. I mean, we're going to have to either let go of some people, <clears throat> Trevor Carrick, and potentially move on from others. This, this team, I don't want to say is unrecognizable, but a lot just changed. And I don't know how to feel about it.